uh, for our premium members on YouTube channel. This is the link to our YouTube channel. Thanks to JK and his team members. It's called Right View Lab. So if you go to the YouTube app and just type Right View Lab, you will see our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so to access these recorded videos, uh, one needs to join the YouTube channel, which we appreciate that if you join, <laughs> you become a stronger part of our Sangha. But there are many videos also that you can just watch for free. Um, yeah, we do every day. <laughs> seven days a week. And then also we have a chat group on our WhatsApp. It's where we can ask questions or share something that has inspired us that day. It's just a chat group. And uh, yeah, if you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me or Yuichi, you can email me at vitale22 at hotmail.com and tell me a little bit about your spiritual journey so far. And if you join our YouTube channel, you will be invited to an advanced questions and answers session, which is held monthly, which is going to be next Tuesday yeah, on the 18th. And also we have a daily gratitude uh, group on Facebook. Does it make sense? <laughs> yeah, and you can raise your hand at any time uh, when questions come up to your mind. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, because uh, not everyone can join these meetups. <clears throat> Life is very hectic, as we all know, and especially when people have children in the house, you know, it's just children need your attention all the time. Or some people, they're very tired after work. But we record and we hope that when people learn the Dharma, like all of you are here, that's how we can change the world um, because people will find fulfillment in their own hearts instead of always looking for it out there and if everyone finds fulfillment in their hearts then we can all enjoy a better world together so okay yeah so in the happiness lab we talk about uh, true happiness uh, which is the goal of buddhism ultimate goal of buddhism is to have our suffering eliminated and enable joyfulness. So basically that's Buddhism in, in, in a nutshell. <laughs> How can we have our suffering eliminated and enjoy the fulfillment in the heart? You know, so just having no suffering, that's not enough. It's like if you have your child who is sick, you know, a parent will do anything to remove the sickness of their child, take them to the doctor, find the medicine, you know, best food or nut nutrition. But then after the child recovers from the sickness, you want to see your child laugh again and run around and play again. So we're like, okay, let's go to the park <laughs> and have some fun. Uh, you've been working very hard. So yeah, so removing suffering and enabling joyfulness. So happiness becomes very important in Buddhism. So that's why we've dedicated one whole meetup on Saturdays to happiness. And Buddha teaches us that true happiness is when our life becomes a vast ocean of dazzling brightness. Yeah, like what Jamon was talking about, this light. You know, instead of seeing darkness or suffering, we want to see light, the brightness, the joyfulness, and gratitude. I'm so happy to be alive. You know, when we talk with people, we don't hear them say this too many times. It's more like, oh, this didn't work, or why am I here, or this is not uh, as I wish it to be, you know, things like that. So... Uh, yeah, so this is the ultimate happiness in Buddhism that we are aiming for. And by the more we listen to Buddhism, the closer we get to it. However, um, yeah, well, okay, let's see about this. Uh, we have Master Shinran, S-H-I-N-R-A-N. He's the founder of Pure Land School of Buddhism in Japan about 800 years ago. And he 
kind of summarize what Buddha taught in a very succinct manner. That's why we respect him a lot. And he said, Buddha's inconceivable vow is a great ship that carries us across the sea that is difficult to cross. And his unimpeded light is the sun of wisdom that destroys the mind of darkness. Yeah, we were talking about the mind of darkness. And the only thing that removes darkness is that light. Yeah, light in Buddhism, it means wisdom. And Buddha's light or wisdom happens to be unimpeded. Uh, nothing can become an obstacle to it. That's why we all are able to be here today. <laughs> There were many obstacles, you know, maybe some of us were very tired or even hungry. Some of us might not have had dinner yet or, you know, some kind of physical conditions. There are all these barriers to listen to Buddhism or finding happiness. But somehow this light of the Buddha is so powerful and unimpeded that helps us uh, gain this wisdom. The wisdom to be... Um, able to actually get lifted aboard this great ship that carries us across the ocean, which is difficult to cross. Yeah, this is a metaphor for life. You know, life is often compared to an ocean. We have it on this other slide. So if we don't understand why our life is compared to an ocean, which is difficult to cross, then it's kind of difficult to understand what is this great ship? that carries us across it. This is very natural. So that's why Buddha taught uh, about both of these, about suffering and happiness. Both are very important. So ocean that is difficult to cross, you know, is that the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean? Neither of them, it's our life. Yeah, Buddha teaches that since we are born, it's as if we've been tossed in the middle of a vast ocean called life. So we have to figure it out. You know, many young people tell me, yeah, life doesn't come with a manual. <laughs> Everything else does. You buy an iPhone, it comes with a manual. You know, anything you buy, usually we don't even look at the manual, but but for life that we request a manual, it's it doesn't come with one. We have to figure out, you know, which direction should I head <clears throat> so that I don't regret my choices so that I can find happiness. But it's difficult to cross because the ocean is so vast and all we see around us are just pieces of wood, driftwood, or planks. Uh, what we really want to find is the land, the shore, or a big ship. But instead, all we find around us are these logs and uh, driftwood. And the examples of these logs and driftwoods are, for example, it could be finding a job. You know, we all need a job to survive. And um, yeah, many people tell me recently they've been uh, laid off. They don't have a job right now. So that's like this log that they were relying on. It turned over and they were tossed back into the ocean and then choke on salt water and they suffer until they look for another log. And then once they find it, they're like, okay, I'm going to swim towards it with all my might. They get a hold of it. And once we get a hold of that log, we feel a sense of relief, of course, because we don't have to struggle so much. Uh, yeah, but because this log, by its very nature, it's not connected to the bottom of the ocean. It's <laughs> it's just a floating object. So it's at the mercy of the wind and the waves. So constantly uh, drifting. So that's why people uh, always have this kind of uneasiness. They don't know what's going to happen next. And that's why Buddha says this ocean becomes very difficult to cross as long as we are floundering here. So instead of being here, we want to be on top of this great ship. Uh, that's what uh, Buddhism teaches is our life's purpose to get on this great ship. Okay, so we need to understand why we struggle in life. Uh, okay. Yeah, another way of looking at it is, you know, we are constantly creating karma. 
the energy of our thoughts, what we speak to people and what we do with our bodies. And uh, maybe the simplest explanation of karma is like, if you punch the wall, you're going to be the one who, uh, who's going to get hurt. Your hands will get hurt. Uh, it's kind of funny way of explaining karma. Yeah, maybe we are angry at someone else. That's why we want to punch the wall, but we get hurt. Buddha also says karma is like, you know, or anger is like you hold on to a hot piece of charcoal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. So our own hand will get burned first uh, before we want to kind of retaliate or show our uh, displeasure with someone, which is never good. <laughs> but that's what makes life kind of bitter. And the more we listen to Buddhism, the more we understand, wait a minute, I am the one who is creating this karma and I am the one responsible for my headspace. And I have a choice what I um, do at every moment. Do I want to stay grounded in the now or do I want to get carried away? I'm having a choice. The more we see that, the less we suffer and the more we can have that joy in our heart, the joy of uh, being free to choose and also um, the joy of being exceedingly grateful for all the blessings that we have. Okay, so as we understand the hardships of life and we want to move towards this great ship of true happiness towards the shore of enlightenment or something solid it's very good to have three mindsets we are encouraged to have so yeah in order to listen to buddhism intently it is crucial to be aware of the following the first one is to think that it is my suffering that I am trying to resolve, not anyone else's. I mean, first and foremost, it is my suffering that I'm trying to resolve. Of course, the more I understand my suffering, I can help other people with their sufferings. But it's important to be mindful of uh, and honest with what's going on in our own uh, innermost core. And then it's very good to cultivate the second mindset here, which is Buddhism is so hard to listen to. Yeah, it's such a rare blessing to be able to hear the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha. So all of you here, <laughs> you have this rare blessing. And as we share the teachings with other people, we realize, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's so difficult to convey the message to other people like karma or even the struggles that people go through as if they're in a denial or something. They don't want to own up to it or admit that they're in that ocean. So, so then we don't go forward, you know, it's hard. So if you are able to listen to Buddhism, which you're here right now, <laughs> and Buddhism is very hard to listen to, according to the Buddha. So we want to cherish this. Yeah, Gesundheit. <laughs> And the third mindset is that the Buddhist teachers from whom I am receiving the profound teaching are so precious. Yeah, so it's important to have that feeling, um, and establish the connection and nurture our ties with our Buddhism teachers uh, in order to go forward. So this mindset is very important. The stronger this mindset is, the faster we will see life as a dazzling ocean of brightness instead of an ocean of vast darkness. Yeah. And yeah, so that's the ultimate goal of Buddhism, um, the true happiness. But then also at the same time, what is very important for us is daily practice or how we can go forward um yeah so we need to practice um like baby steps as well so those baby steps one of them is um buddha teaches us to be connected to here and now we need to cultivate gratitude more and more deeply that itself translates to instant happiness <laughs> if we can be grateful for anything uh, we can instantly become more joyful in life. 
And I have a very interesting story that I can share with you here. Yeah, because, um, okay, let, let me read the story here first. Okay. So there was a boy whose family was very wealthy. One day, his father took him on a trip to the country where he aimed to show his son how poor people lived. So they arrived to a farm of a very poor family, as he considered them to be poor. They spent their several days. On their return, the father asked his son whether he liked the trip. Oh, it was great, Dad, the boy replied. Did you notice how poor people live? Yeah, I did, said the boy. The father asked his son to tell in more details about his impressions from their trip. Well, we have only one dog, and they have four of them. In our garden, there is a pool, while they have a river that has no end. We've got expensive lanterns, but they have stars above their heads at night. We have the patio, and they have the whole horizon. We have only a small piece of land, while they have endless fields. We buy food, but they grow it. We have high fence for protection of our property, and they don't need it as their friends protect them. The father was stunned. He could not say a word. Then the boy added, Thank you, Dad, for letting me see how poor we are. <laughs> this story shows that the true wealth, as well as happiness, is not measured by material things. Love, friendship, and freedom are far more valuable. Yeah, I like this story very much um, because it also helps us understand happiness is very relative in relation to what kind of person, uh, you know, the person we compare ourselves with, if we find ourselves in a better place, we feel happy. And if we find, if we compare ourselves with someone who's above us, then we feel unhappy. So our happiness is constantly fluctuating. No matter how often we are told, you know, don't compare yourself with others, because it's very difficult not to do so. Um, you know, the mind is constantly making that comparison in order to just, um, you know, make judgment or um, make an assessment of what to do next, you know, so at least subconsciously. If you understand this is the working of the mind, so we don't become a slave to it. Like, you know, you look at, many people tell me they look at, I don't know, People's Magazine or they watch, you know, these celebrities' lifestyles. And suddenly they feel, oh, my house is so small, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. It's very natural. The mind, monkey mind, begins to be so active if we value that wealth as a sign of happiness. And then, okay, I don't have that. So we're going to feel sorry for ourselves. But like uh, Jane was saying at the beginning, one way to be connected to the now is to spend time in nature. So when we go and spend time in nature, like in the story, suddenly you're like the whole sky is your roof. The stars become your lamps or lanterns. And as we learn to practice kindness and show concern for the hardships that other people go through as well, our ties with other people improve, they help us um, watch our home we don't have to live in fear all the time yeah so that's the benefit of um, cultivating happiness in our heart instead of looking for happiness out there so that's how we can practice um, this state of mindfulness every day to increase our sense of joy yeah, to kind of examine our values, how materialistic we might be and how that might be actually depriving us of having a sense of happiness. So the more we practice gratitude in that way, 
the more we are going closer and closer towards that great ship in the ocean of hardships that uh, I explained earlier. Also part of our daily practices are the six parameters. So yeah, the more we give to other people, we practice kindness, uh, the more we keep our promises. So if we are not sure, we don't want to give our words to people because once we make a promise, we need to follow through. It's a disciplining our mind and the body. And uh, the more we practice patience, you know, if we don't know patience is a virtue, we easily lose our temper. And anger is not a good karma in Buddhism. <laughs> so practicing patience while we plant good seed, it doesn't mean we become a doormat or something. People tell me, no, no, no. While we are patient, we mindfully plant good seed. We put in the effort. And when things go wrong, we do self-reflection instead of blaming other people. And in this way, we will have more and more wisdom which means we become um, more at ease with the choices we make in life because we can see the cause and effect relationships and less, fewer and fewer regrets in life. And as we all know, regrets create a lot of unhappiness. So we can become grateful about the opportunities we have in life and see everything as an opportunity for growth Actually, I was going to read a story here too. Um, the struggles we go through in life, the hardships, we can see them as opportunities. And I read this story, which is going to share it for us on the screen. It's from this book, Something You Forgot Along the Way, Stories of Wisdom and Learning. It's a very good book for especially um, as a beginner to Buddhism. Or also, if you really want to know how to practice the Dharma, the teachings in daily life. Yeah, so this story is going to teach us how we change our perspective. So instead of just seeing the suffering, we see the opportunity behind that suffering. Or how we can actually uh, strengthen our, our mind. Okay, it's called, it's like the sound of a pulley. The Wisdom of Socrates. The largest landowner in ancient Greece called on Socrates one day and bragged about his extensive holdings. Socrates rolled out a map of the world and indicated Greece. Where exactly is your land? He asked. No matter how much land I had, it wouldn't show up here, said the other man, dumbfounded. If your land doesn't show on the map, you haven't got much to brag about, said Socrates with a genial smile. I'm constantly working the universe in my mind. So this is just the happiness that we were talking about. Um, yeah, not being materialistic and attached to possessions that come and go. And the happiness of it is so small. Okay, next part here. Socrates is credited with saying, my advice to you is to get married. If you find a good wife, you'll be happy. If not, you'll become a philosopher. There are many well-known anecdotes about his shrewish wife, Xanthippe. Once, hearing her complain all day long about her husband's failure to earn a decent living, a friend of Socrates commented that such nagging was too much to bear. Socrates rejoined, I'm used to it. It's like hearing the unceasing sound of a pulley. <laughs> Another time, annoyed that her husband paid no attention to her litany of complaints, Xanthippe emptied a chamber pot on his head, prompting him to remark, after the thunder, there generally comes rain. Words like this fend off arguments. The thought of being saddled with a shrewish wife is aggravating. Think of it as learning to ride a bucking horse, however, and it becomes a challenge. A man who can handle the most difficult horse of all need fear no one. Socrates impressed this lesson on his disciples using his own family life as illustration. This is an important lesson in the art of living. Yeah, of course, I am sure Socrates... Uh, 
you know, being a philosopher <laughs> uh, and a teacher, uh, you know, he was not making enough money. So his wife, I'm sure they must have had children too. Uh, it's very natural for his wife to have had, you know, uh, to have been upset with him. Uh, it's very natural. We understand that, of course. Uh, but that was his passion in life. So <laughs> Socrates chose this career uh, as his path, and he stood by it. So instead of resenting his wife or being upset with her, I think he took responsibility for his choices. And uh, yeah, he saw the opportunity behind that pain. And I think Socrates is credited for saying the unexamined life is not worth living. He actually would go in the town and talk to all these young people questioning their thoughts or their values, how true that was. I think if people do it with compassion, that's really a uh, good friend. <laughs> if you have such a good friend who does it to you with compassion, they ask you thought-provoking questions. Out of compassion, that's a very good friend to keep. So anyway, that was what I wanted to share about happiness and uh, having the long-term goal and also how we go forward towards it. And uh, yeah, do you have any questions? You can raise your hand. If not, we can move on. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you, Yuichi, for sharing the story from the book. And let's hear from you also. Okay. Then I'm going to su uh, summarize the the karma lab last week yeah actually we have been discussing the same topic week after week uh it's the the, it's the law of cause condition and effect the law of cause condition and effect uh, mm, yeah the center of our interest is our future, somebody said. We are all interested what in what will happen in our future. And we want to know because if because the future is full of uncertainty, we have to have a lot of anxiety, insecurity, hibijibi. And if the future is bright, we can enjoy the present moment more and more. Vice versa, if the future is dark, likewise, the present moment will become dark too. Future and the present has very deep connection. So once we understand this law, law of karma or the law of cause and effect, uh, we can understand the future more and more. And at the same time, Buddha said, human beings are all foolish. <laughs> He's, he used the word foolish beings. We are all foolish beings. Why is that? Because we, all, we are all ignorant. Ignorant about what? Uh, ignorant about the law of cause and effect. We have this nature. Uh, okay, I'll come back to this topic of foolishness later. First, let me explain the law of cause, condition, and effect first. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, incidentally, the slide is here. I mentioned ignorance. Uh, this is one of the six blind passions. <clears throat> um, Blind passions, mm, something that cause trouble and problems to, to us. Desire, anger, ignorance, doubt, conceit, and wrong view. I'll explain the meaning of this in the future. Today, yeah, it's the ignorance. Ignorance about the law of cause and effect. 
Yeah, Vida mentioned the human nature of comparing with others. We are always comparing ourselves with others and then we feel happy or we feel sad or depressed. Uh, when we feel inferior, uh, we feel sad or mm, depressed. But on the other hand, we can feel superior to others. We feel good, right? Um, we're always comparing ourselves. And then uh, when we see some somebody who are happier or more prettier or more uh, wealthier, we, we, we become envious. We become jealous. And envy and jealousy is the same category with the ignorance. Because envy and jealousy happens because of this ignorance. Because we don't know the law of cause and effect. So all the more, we need to deepen our understanding the, of the law of cause and effect. Okay, so let me have a brief review of the basic principle of the law of cause and effect. Yeah, I've been <laughs> using this slide again and again, time and again, because it's very important. Uh, hopefully, I'd like all of you to memorize these four sentences and so that you can uh, recite it wherever you are. <laughs> without any note. You can reap only what you sow. And good actions yield good results. Bad actions bring bad results. And one's own actions determine one's fate. Uh, you can reap only what you sow. This means seeds planted will surely grow. There's no exception. If, the, if a seed is planted in soil, it will surely germinate and grow bigger and bigger. And eventually, it, uh, flowers will bloom or it will bear fruits or crops. So once you see the, uh, plant the seed, <laughs> you will surely harvest the fruits. This is very scientific. Yeah. And also inspiring. Actually, many in, uh, inspirational speakers are just talking about this. And then you incur uh, uh, they encourage us to make effort. Our effort will surely be rewarded because we are plant planting good seed, making effort. <laughs> if we don't plant seeds, we won't harvest anything. Yeah, that's what it means. And if the seeds are good seeds, we will harvest good fruit. If the seeds are bad, of course, in nature, there's no such bad seeds. It talks about uh, our action, our karma. So bad karma brings bad consequence. In this part, in this part, some people... Uh, have different opinion because we 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 think we see many exceptional phenomena or uh, examples. Sometimes bad actions might bring good results, and vice versa. Good actions might yield bad results. Mm, this uh, this is this observation. Uh, we have because of our understanding of the law of cause and effect is not deep. Yeah. It's a very superficial observation. We have to see not between the lines, but behind the scene, we have to see through uh, to the root cause. And then uh, we will find out this this law is always valid, holds truth all the time, regardless of uh, places and culture. 
and one's own actions determine one's fate. Um, in other words, my karma, my harvest. If I have the cause, I will uh, receive the effect. That's the meaning. If I don't have the cause, I will not receive any effect. Yeah. Okay, so this is the basic understanding of the law of cause and effect. And then we can move forward to, to, the, to the topic of condition. I said cause will uh, seeds will surely germinate uh, if once it's planted, but conditions are necessary. If the conditions are missing, uh, seeds will not germinate. Yeah, so everything happens because cause and conditions are united. All the events, phenomena, accidents, predicament, and episodes, everything happens because of the union of cause and effect. If I use the analogy of uh, nature, uh, conditions are soil, oxygen, water, sunlight, farmers' labor, rain, and everything. Because seeds have this condition, it will germinate and bear fruits. Okay, so, yeah, so we are talking about our topic, main topic is our karma and our future. So in uh, in this in uh, example of our karma and future, yeah, this is the uh, another you know, diagram. Uh, conditions are these: first, people around us, and also circumstances and environment like soil and uh, water, and also what we eat and drink. Are you aware of the influence from your friends or coworkers, teammate, and uh, neighbors? If you are surrounded by good people, naturally you will be motivated. You'll be inspired or you get energy from those people having good conversation or uh, mm, yeah, <clears throat> influences from those people are much greater than we think or we know. And vice versa, if we are surrounded by bad friends or <laughs> bad neighbors, naturally we, we receive bad vibe influence and uh, we are affected, we are discouraged or not motivated at all, or we lose motivation. It's the opposite effect. Uh, it's the same with what we eat and drink. This is, maybe I don't need to explain this, but uh, our body is made of this and uh, our health or Sickness will be the effect. It's all up to those conditions. Uh, the desire might be the cause. Yeah. If you sometimes, you know, we feel like, oh, I want to eat something sweet. <laughs> but, oh, sorry, <laughs> this is not the top. What we talk today. Sorry. <laughs> if you have a little bit uh, such an inclination, oh, I want to eat something sweet. And then you look for the, the kitchen shelf and the fridge, but you don't find anything. And then, okay, I don't eat anything sweet. <laughs> we can easily give up. But if you find a delicious looking pastry in the cardboard, and then, oh, there's something. 
But in the end, we eat the sweet. Mm. So sometimes it's okay, but for those people who have uh, diabetes or cavity, it's not good. So having those food in a kitchen can be a bad condition for those people. <clears throat> and even if we eat same food, uh, sometimes people receive different effect. An easy example is uh, allergic uh, symptom. Some people have a strong allergy to peanuts or egg or buckwheat. Usually people, no, uh, average people are okay, but uh, for those who have allergy, it's sometimes it becomes fatal, it's very dangerous. So in this case, condition of peanuts is the same, but because their cause or karma are different, the effect will be different. So the condition, uh, sorry, the cause, the difference of cause uh, brings about the difference of effect. Having the allergic uh, nature or not uh, decides the effect, even though condition is the same. <clears throat> Why I'm talking about this? Because it's similar with our human relationship. Uh, many people ask us question, how can I deal with this person in my office? Uh, I, cannot, uh, I don't have good chemistry with this person. Some people might call such a person toxic. <laughs> it's kind of subjective expression because for other people, this same person might not be toxic. Or other coworkers are not complaining about the same person but only this specific person is complaining about his own uh, kind of enemy or toxic person. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they don't have good chemistry with each other. So in this case, this uh, toxic person is the condition. And that the complainer's karma is the cause. And the cause and the condition got united. And then this person has to suffer. That's the effect. The, it's a bad effect. Again, because the cause and condition got united, uh, effect arise. But other coworker maybe they don't have the same karma, same cause. So even though they have the same condition in the workplace, they don't have the bad effect. They don't suffer because having the same condition, but the karma and the cause are different. So naturally effect will be different. We need to uh, distinguish cause and condition. But many people think when, I mean, in this case, this person is suffering because this toxic person, let me call this person toxic person because it's uh, easy to <laughs> say. So toxic person is the cause of her suffering. This is a typical misunderstanding. This person is just the condition. This person is not the condition, uh, sorry, it's not the cause. We need to distinguish cause and condition. Cause always lies in the person who receives the effect. A person who receives bad effect has the bad cause in the past. And this bad cause 
got united with a certain condition. Usually, it's a bad condition. So bad cause and bad condition got united, and bad effect has been produced. So again, we should not mix the cause and condition. If we understand this deeply, um, we don't need to blame other people too much mm, because we, we will understand other people are just conditioned. They are just conditioned, not the cause. Condi uh, cause always reside within us, uh, one who has received the uh, effect. So just distinguishing cause and condition can reduce our suffering. So yeah, this has been the topic of our karmic karma lab. And I will talk more about this uh, in uh, next week too. So yeah, time is running out. So if you have question, uh, you can Raise your hand. Hmm. Okay, and then, then if there's no question, yeah, I want to add just one more thing. Um, I'm not telling that this toxic person is not responsible at all, maybe he has some bad behavior. So in this sense, uh, he needs to uh, fix his bad behavior. There's no doubt about it. And the boss might be responsible about it, yeah. So I'm talking about the spiritual aspect. In order for us to move forward, on our spiritual journey, uh, this understanding uh, is very important and we can have a lot of benefits from, from this. Was it, uh, is there any question in the chat box? No, so um, <laughs> they wrote that it was very good uh -huh. that you gave examples. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, they said they appreciate the examples because it helps to illustrate the difference between mm. the cause and condition. Yeah, we don't hear much about cause and conditions. Um, generally, many people, when they learn Buddhism, mm. yeah, but if we can learn to distinguish them, then we can constantly work on our causes, internal causes to improve ourselves instead of just being bitter and resentful about other people. Yeah, that's what I love about the law of cause, condition, and effect. Okay, Jamon has his hand up. Go ahead, Jamon. Hey, I don't really have a question, um, Bita, Yuichi, but I do have like a statement. Just want to say that I appreciate the the breakdown of the cause and effect because throughout my whole entire life and most of the, any books I've ever read and many books I've read, um, they talk about cause and effect. But they don't talk about the condition directly, indirectly. It's it's not it's mentioned with the cause indirectly, but you won't I won't catch it because it's all it, they apply it to the cause versus breaking it down, separating it from cause condition to effect. So um, I appreciate you guys separating that and giving me a different uh, vantage point to actually look at that and break that down a little bit further. So I appreciate you guys for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate your kind yeah. words, <laughs> Jamon. Yeah, it's good to be able to see it that way. It's a very empowering uh, as we learn more and more and very liberating because, like we said, we don't have to hold resentment anymore against other people. We just try to engage in self-improvement and attracting good outcomes, good effects 
and more and more happiness in life. So that's the process also going forward towards true happiness. Okay, very good. We reached the end of the hour. I'm so happy that we were able to get together here and learn the Dharma together. So take good care and hope to see you next time. Yeah, tomorrow we have purpose.